Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Spiritual darkness, by the way. Shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on love. And probably not the same thing the TBN crowd preaches or teaches or whatever they do. Or is it brainwashing? I forget. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I know I've said it a hundred times, but here you go. 101. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. A lawyer, a doctor of the law, asked Jesus a question. And he says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Okay. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Unless, of course, you're a Seventh-day Adventist and you listen to Ellen White and she went to heaven and looked at the Ten Commandments and, and brightly lit up was, keep the Sabbath day. Funny, I don't see that here. Uh, maybe I missed it somewhere. Uh, I don't know. Love the Lord, love the commandment. Uh, love your neighbor. And of course, God's people were to be a separated and segregated people. You know? You're not supposed to live next door to the Church of Satan, which was founded in Los Angeles, of all places. On June 6, 1966, 6666. Yeah. No thank you. So. But, uh, and then they'll tell you that, uh, you know, if you listen to the Hebrew Roots people, they'll say, oh, well, Paul changed the law. He's a false apostle. Uh, no, Jesus changed the law. Of course, when you look at the Ten Commandments uh, and compare them to these two commandments, you know, they're basically in a nutshell, I guess you could say, right? You know? Sum it up into a few sentences, here you go. But did you know Jesus did give you, us, a new commandment? Oh, yeah. Sure did. In the book of John, chapter 13, verse 31, he is, Christ is getting ready to be betrayed by Judas. So, verse 31, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in him now Christ oftentimes spoke of himself as the son of man and he's spoken of as being the only begotten son of God and if you look in 1 Timothy 3.16 and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Some of the modern Bibles say he appeared in a body. Well, guess what? Go to a maternity ward in any hospital and you'll see babies that appear in a body. 
Every single one of them. Is there a bodiless baby born? No. He appeared in a body. It's a big deal. Everybody that's born is appears in a body. Now, there's a big difference. And I think it's the NIV that does that. Uh, I studied so much crazy stuff. I can't keep up with all the insanity. I try, but don't always, can't always do it. No. God was manifest in the flesh. Not he appeared in a body. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. This is one of my favorite verses. So let's go back. John 13, 31. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while, I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I say unto the Jews, Whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say unto you, A new commandment I give unto you. Now these are words of Christ in red. This is not Bob speaking. Jesus says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. So love the Lord, love the neighbor, love one another. Wow. Who changed the law? Uh, Jesus did. All these Hebrew Roots people, you know, they, they can't handle that. No, we got we want to be Torah keepers. Yeah, well, they're a bunch of Torah hypocrites because uh, if they were real Torah keepers, they'd be on their way to San Francisco with uh, stones in their hands. Yeah, that's in the Torah. But uh, no, they they only want you keeping the Sabbath. That's that's their Torah. Yeah, they want you to try to keep the law to to be saved. They don't want to talk about this kind of stuff. No, 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 no. No. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Let you know a little secret. The devil's kitties do not have love. There's no love in the devil's kingdom or among his children. There's no love. They may pretend like it. They may, may use the right sounding words, but there is no love. All they have is hate and murder. All right, let's hit John chapter 15, verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. So Christ is the plant, the tree of life, I guess you could say. And God the Father is the one that prunes that tree of life. God the Father, right? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. He prunes it, in other words, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, you ever seen a fruit tree, you know, and you get a branch that doesn't bear fruit anymore, and you, 
you cut it back and then sometimes you'll get two or three new branches that'll grow out of it and they'll bear fruit you know you, sometimes when you cut a branch it'll sprout too so instead of having one dead branch you got two branches that bear a lot of fruit and that's what he wants spiritual fruit that is verse 3 now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me I am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into fire and they are burned lake of fire people can can we get a spiritual application for this oh yeah verse 7 if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples as the father hath loved me so have i loved you as the father hath loved me so have i loved you continue ye in my love if if ye keep my commandments remember those two commandments well three commandments love the lord love thy neighbor love one another uh, we know you got to keep all those 600 and something laws hebrew roots people say yeah we got to keep all those laws you know how, how about keeping the laws that christ said oh or jesus oh no no he's not jesus he's yeshua that's what they'll tell you you know i'm firmly convinced Yeshua is not Jesus. They've convinced me of that. So, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. You know, we should be full of joy that the inheritance that true believers are going to receive after this world passes away. But looking at the way things are now, it's uh, pretty hard to have joy, my opinion. Anyways, but so much lies, deception, evil, hatred, everything totally opposite of the love of Christ. Verse 12, this is my commandment. Well, let me read, let, back to 11. These things have I spoken unto you, unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, 
Christ speaking, that ye love one another, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And people, let me tell you something. God came to earth, born of a human body, felt hunger, felt thirst, weariness, sleepiness, pain, all to prove his love for us and to redeem us from the curse of sin and death. And these people that would trample on that, they have a place for them called the Lake of Fire. And let me tell you something, they're not going to need a sweater in the wintertime to stay warm. That's for sure. Why would, the, why would God go to all this trouble? To suffer the same things that we did. And him even more so. I can't imagine getting crucified. I, I cannot imagine that. I just, unbelievable. I mean, who would come up, who in their right mind would come up with a religious system like this? Who, who would come up with this stuff? I mean, it, it's too insane to even, you know, to be fake. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Oh, okay. You know, Jesus said, if you keep in his words, if you keep his words, right? Henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me. Tell that to the whosoever will crowd. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Christ chose the apostles. But I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. Wait a minute, didn't he just say that? You know, one thing I learned in college, if the Teacher said something two or three times, you knew that was going to be on the test because it was important. Yep, verse 12, verse 17. These things I command you that ye love one another. Here you go, right here, verse 18. If the world hate you, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Why did Satan try to kill God in the war in heaven? I mean, did Satan have a reason to hate God? Did he have a reason? I, if he did, I sure, it's not in the Bible. I can't understand why in the world he would hate God and try to kill him. And yes, Satan tried to kill God. That's what a war is. In a war, you try to kill people. Satan tried to kill God and take his place. Uh, sorry, that position is not available. It's already been filled. So, verse 19. 
If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because, but because ye are not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. Wow. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Somebody send the preacher of rapture crowd a memo. Oh, that's right. They don't, they're New Testament Christians. We don't read the Old Testament. That's for the you know who's. But we don't read the New Testament either because, uh, you know, my favorite sports team's on the ball game, uh, you know, television, bass fishing, uh, whatever, country line dancing, whatever they do. I don't know. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. They will take your words and try to use your words to hang you with. And guess what? The words of Jesus are now hate speech in a number of of white Western formerly Christian countries. Yeah, I know for a fact that the New Testament is considered hate speech by the U.S. Department of State. And guess who is the head of the Secretary of State? Yeah. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. That's right. If I had not come and spoken of them, they had not had sin. You see, if somebody doesn't know the law, there's no sin. But Jesus came and told them. They knew better. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. What's a cloak? It's like a cape. What do you do with a, a cape? You, it's a covering. They have no covering for their sin. Why? Because they rejected Christ, the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world, and his blood. Verse 23, Jesus speaking, He that hateth me, hateth my Father also. Wow. He that hateth me, hateth my Father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Yes, there were prophets in the past that had somebody do something to be healed of leprosy, had raised the dead, but nobody, but nobody did all the works that Christ did. Christ did everything. He made the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. He cured the lepers. He raised the dead. And if you go to the Jewish encyclopedia, they even admit that Christ did these miracles. They admit it. Of course, they say he did it by the, well, let's just say that he didn't do it by the power of the Father above. They said he did it by the power of the Father below, which is the unpardonable sin, by the way. 
blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because they said he had an unclean spirit. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled, that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, who is the Comforter? The Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he will testify of me. You ever been to a Pentecostal church? I have. It's always, oh, the Holy Ghost this, and the Holy Spirit that, and the Holy Ghost that. Now, wait a minute. Jesus says right here, when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he will testify of me. The Holy Spirit is supposed to testify of Christ. The Holy Spirit will bring you to the cross and the blood of Jesus. God the Father sends the Holy Spirit, which will testify of Christ. And if they're always the Holy Ghost this, it sounds like the wrong spirit. I don't know. It doesn't sound right to me. Verse 27. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. So let's skip around a little bit. First John 4 and verse 8. He that loveth not, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Hmm. Romans 13, 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Oh my gosh, that's Paul. Paul's a false apostle. We got to keep all those laws. So says the Hebrew roots people. It wasn't Paul that changed the law. Jesus changed the law. But they don't believe in Jesus. They believe in Yeshua, Hamashiach. Yeah. John 1. 1 John 4 and verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for God is of love. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Wow. But, 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 we got to keep the Sabbath. We got to do all this stuff. Yeah. I don't think so. Well, let's read more of Paul. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. The flesh and the spirit are fighting a battle. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye are led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Wow. Those that are led of the Holy Spirit are not under the law. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. 
which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies envyings murders drunkenness revelings and such like of the which i tell you before as i have told you in time past that they which do such things shall not shall not inherit the kingdom of god ain't gonna happen buddy but the fruit of the spirit is love what let's read that again but the fruit didn't jesus say he was the vine we were the branches and we had to bear much fruit yeah but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering which is what the lord did with me waiting for me to grow up and serve him yeah he was long suffering with me boy i'll tell you what but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law or you could be a hebrew roots person and keep the sabbath and they that are christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us not be desirous of vain glory provoking one another envying one another what is vain glory well i don't know getting a gold medal at the olympics that's to me that would be vain glory that to me i don't know let's take a look at paul again ephesians chapter 5 let's start in verse 6 let no man deceive you with vain words what, what does vain mean worthless no good let no man deceive you with vain words you want to hear vain words wait till hear politicians talking uh before the elections that's vain words let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things cometh the wrath of god upon the children of disobedience be not ye therefore partakers with them don't hang out with them don't be with them the children of disobedience we don't belong there verse 8 for ye were sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the lord walk as children of light for the fruit for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth yes indeed for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the lord listen to this carefully and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them um uh, bob's quick note here you know i notice when i go on social media socialist media for example gab whatever you always get those that say ah well you know you're no better than they are and you're being judgmental you know what the bible says but rather well and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them you know what a synonym of reprove them is expose them expose the wickedness the evil expose it 
And I'm pretty good at that, actually. So, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Oh, yeah, they always do their evil in secret because they know that one day they might actually cross the line and there might be holy, righteous indignation. And God forbid the Christians get fed up and grab rope and put it to good use. And rope is recyclable. Yeah. That's, that's what I like about rope. It's recyclable. Yeah. So, let's take a look at something. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13. Boy, I've read this. When I was doing uh, weddings, boy, I read this a lot. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. Uh, that word charity here in the Greek is sometimes translated as love. I mean, let's face it. If you have love, you'll have charity for people. You know, you'll help those in need. And if you have charity, it proves you have love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity or love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Love. Isn't that what Christ said? Love? You know, it doesn't matter. If you don't have love, you got, you got nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. All the prophecies in the Bible, there will come a time when every prophecy in the Bible is fulfilled. They're going to fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Right. When the Christ's kingdoms come, when the perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, and then shall I know, even as also I am known, now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity, or love. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Well, everybody, 
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.